Hello, everyone. My name is Nikhil Manchanda, and I'm the uh, PTL for OpenStack Trove. Um, and uh, thanks for uh, coming to uh, take a look at this PTL uh, recording series. And today I'm going to tell you more, a bit more about uh, what we achieved uh, for the Kilo milestone and what we're looking, what we're planning to achieve in the Liberty milestone for Trove. So let's get started. So I just wanted to start off with uh, the mission statement of Trove. As you all know, Trove is the OpenStack database service, and its mission statement simply states to provide scalable and reliable cloud database as a service provisioning functionality for both relational and non-relational database engines, and to continue to improve its fully featured and extensible open source framework. Um, just keeping that in mind as we go through um, sort of what our goals and plans are for Liberty, um, just so that we're sort of aligned and we know where we're going. So that makes sense. Next slide, please. Um, so just to give you a quick overview of Kilo and how it went for us, uh, we had a lot of commits in Kilo, uh, about 270 commits from 71 different contributors from a lot of different companies. Uh, we closed out about 22 blueprints uh, and fixed around 150 bugs. Uh, there were about 3,000 code reviews and 46, um, uh, sorry, 46,000 total lines of code changed. And you can see all of the details of what changed and what blueprints were fixed and what bugs were fixed um, uh, in, on Launchpad and, and uh, more details for the numbers on Stack Analytics. Next slide, please. So some of the big sort of themes that we covered in Kilo uh, were sort of Kilo was the first, really the first release where we introduced the notion of uh, specs for Trove. Uh, other OpenStack projects all, uh, like Nova, Cinder also moved to this uh, format. Basically, before <coughs> using specs in Garrett for Trove, we used to have specs in a wiki, and so uh, doing uh, specifying specs on the wiki was getting cumbersome where it was hard to do reviews and get feedback from not just people who are writing the specs, but from actual operators and users. Um, and also it was very hard to track changes uh, because on the wiki uh, you could get a, a date and timestamp, but you don't know sort of who said what at what time and uh, how do you respond to those comments and things like that. So we moved to doing specs uh, using the same uh, mechanism we use for code reviews, which is through Garrett. Um, and um, so we started that in Kilo. It worked really well for us, and so we're continuing to do that in Liberty going forward as well. Um, so if you're interested in commenting on some of these specs that I'm going to talk about or um, uh, even proposing a new spec for Liberty, uh, there's more information about the spec lifecycle process that's available at the wiki at that location, and please feel free to sort of look into that, and, and we'd love to have your input. Uh, apart from that, that sort of big shift to specs, uh, we also uh, accomplished a lot more uh, sort of blueprint changes in, in Kilo, and so I'm going to talk about some of that. Next slide, please. Um, so one of the big changes that came in Kilo was uh, an improvement to replication. Uh, as you, uh, some of you might know, we started having uh, replicated uh, instances in Trove in Juno, but the replication that we supported in Juno was largely bin log based replication. Um, MySQL 5.6 came out recently and they added support for a new kind of replication called uh, GTIP based replication, which is basically replication based on a global transaction ID. Uh, so in Kilo, we added support for this uh, type of replication, which included authoring a new replication strategy uh, that made use of this. Uh, some of the advantages of using GTIP based replication over bin log based replication is that um, with GDIP-based replication, you could actually query different MySQL slaves to see which MySQL slave had the latest set of replication data that had made it out to them. Um, and apart from adding this replication strategy, uh, we also added some Horizon support for, for replication, so you could actually go and log into Horizon and then create a Trove instance as a replica or detach it from a replication source. Um, I mentioned that with GDID based replication, you, could, you can actually sort of query the different replicate slaves um, as 
to which slave has the latest data. So that allowed us to uh, add a couple more new APIs to support various methods for failover, uh, such as detach instance and eject replica of source. Uh, the idea here is basically if your uh, replica source, that is your master instance, um, goes out for whatever reason, hardware failure, or the compute host goes down, or, or whatnot, uh, then uh, this eject replica source would actually query um, the, the slaves that were attached to that master to see which had the latest set of data, and then promote that slave to, to the master. So it uh, gives a sort of more complete story for uh, a failover strategy in case you want to uh, in case your master goes down and you want to promote your slave to master. So we added a couple more of these APIs in Kilo. Next slide, please. Uh, we also did a lot of data store improvements in Kilo. We added uh, implementations of a uh, few new data stores. We added implementations for single instance CouchDB uh, and single instance uh, IBM DB2. Um, we also added support for HP Vertica, both single instance support and support for Vertica clusters for uh, the community edition, which is up to three node clusters. Um, and uh, so this is sort of a trend that we've been seeing in Trove um, since Juno and Icehouse, since when we, when we integrated is basically, we're seeing a lot more sort of SQL and non-SQL databases uh, have guest agents in Trove, people want to deploy not just MySQL and Mongo and Redis, but also a lot of these newer databases that uh, are coming up, plus also a lot of the sort of older traditional databases, sort of like DB2 and things like that, to extend Trove to be able to support them as well. So we'll see sort of this trend carry through uh, to Liberty as well, where we're doing some more work in, uh, in, along these lines to add support for no, new data stores. So. Next slide, please. So the other thing that we did in Kilo is we uh, spent some time to pay off uh, technical debt that we had accumulated previously. Uh, we used to have a, uh, a Trove CI that ran as uh, third-party CI uh, called the deprecated Trove CI. We've gone ahead and removed that. All the testing is uh, done under OpenStack Infra now after Kilo. Uh, all of the functional and in tests run uh, as a DevStack VM in a DevStack VM gate environment as a functional job. Uh, unit tests also run completely under OpenStack Infra. Uh, apart from that, we also cleaned out a uh, bunch of deprecated Oslo and incubator code we had. We moved uh, to sort of the latest Oslo incubator code base. We switched out Oslo messaging. Uh, uh, we switched to Oslo messaging for our PC. We used to use uh, the older sort of Impl Combo method that um, was part of the deprecated Oslo incubator code, and so we now move to actually using the Oslo module, Oslo messaging. Um, so that was Kilo. Um, next slide, please. Um, now I want to sort of talk a little bit about what we're planning in Liberty and what we're looking to accomplish. Um, so going with the theme of data store improvements, uh, we have support today for MongoDB and MongoDB clusters. However, um, we don't have support for a lot of common Trove scenarios for MongoDB, and so um, we're looking to add support for these. So, for example, uh, support for backup and restore for MongoDB uh, using MongoDump as an initial strategy, uh, support for MongoDB configuration groups. We have configuration groups today for MySQL, so extending the same, uh, extending the same idea to MongoDB as well. The idea here being if you deploy a MongoDB instance and you want to tweak some of the uh, config values in the Mongo cons, uh, being able to do that as part of a, as part of the Trove API, and not um, so that a user doesn't have to SSH onto the box and tweak settings there. So doing that for MongoDB as well, and in addition to that, sort of basic user and database management for MongoDB um, is is something that we're looking to tackle in Liberty as well. So um, being able to specify or uh, you create users um, and databases through the Trove API. Um, so that you don't have to actually log into um, Mongo to do that. Um, next slide, please. Apart from Mongo, we're also looking to make similar improvements in, in Redis. Um, and the reason sort of we chose Mongo and Redis, or people are, uh, folks are looking to tackle Mongo and Redis is, is, is actually uh, interesting because so we have support for a, a SQL-based solution in MySQL. Uh, we have support for sort of a, a uh, 
uh, document-based data store in Mongo. And uh, with Redis now, we'll have support for uh, a sort of caching solution in Trove through Redis as well. So, so sort of covering different bases uh, over there so that people have uh, sort of access to each one of these uh, different types of data stores uh, in, in Trove. So uh, for Redis, we're planning to up update to the latest Redis 3.02 3 code base um, um, and support for backup and restore for Redis so that you're able to dump your data and load it again into a new Redis instance when you restore the Redis instance. Uh, also support for Redis configuration groups, should allow, which will allow you to tweak uh, configuration file values uh, for Redis through the Trove API so that you don't have to SSH in and muck around with those config values. Next slide, please. So another theme that we're uh, looking at, and, and this is um, talking to a lot of folks <coughs> um, they are really interested in this, is basically um, improvements to the current clustering solutions that we have today. Or in Kilo, we have clustering solutions for MongoDB and for Vertica. Um, and really, the, the uh, MySQL, uh, we also have clustering, well, replication for MySQL, so it's sort of asynchronous uh, master-slave replication. But folks are really interested in getting synchronous multi-master MySQL clusters up and running in Trove. Um, and so we've been working closely with folks from um, Percona and Galera, um, uh, Tesora, HP, all of us, to, to actually come up with a uh, um, Galera clustering solution using Percona Extra DB cluster. And we're looking at landing this in, in during the Liberty timeframe as well. So a lot of uh, users have been actually asking for this, and so we're, we're excited that this hope will become sort of, we're looking to land this in Liberty, and hope, hopefully this will make it. Um, it into Trove during Liberty. Um, apart from Galera clustering, we're also looking to land support for Redis clusters. Uh, so I did mention that we're planning to move to Redis 3.02, something that Redis announced in its latest three, uh, release of 3.0 uh, was support for clusters. And so we're looking to enable this in Trove uh, so that you would not, not only be able to spin up single instance Redis, but also um, diff a, a Redis cluster. Next slide, please. Um, another blueprint that we're looking at um, enabling in Liberty is flavors per data store. Uh, the idea here is basically to limit certain data stores to be able to run only on certain flavors. Um, as we're going through um, the different milestones and increasing support uh, for the different data stores in Trove, uh, this is getting more and more important. Um, let, let, to, 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 to give you a, a quick example here of uh, why this is important, uh, MySQL, for example, can run uh, just fine on a small instance, instance with a two gig disk, but Vertica or MongoDB really has issues um, uh, sort of chugging along on, on, on an instance of that size. So the idea here is to be able to limit uh, certain data stores, for example, Vertica or MongoDB, uh, saying that they're, they're able to run only on certain uh, flavors uh, so that when uh, users try to provision instances of that particular data store through the Trove API on a, on a flavor that is smaller than the size um, that is supported, they'd get an error up front uh, in the API um, and wouldn't have to deal with issues such as um, a small instances being spun up and then having a bad experience with trying to run the data store on, on an instance that is not supported. Um, other uh, areas that we're looking to um, improve in Trove, uh, Horizon is uh, up there on the list. Uh, again, this is based on a lot of user feedback from the summit. Um, we, want, we want to, so we have a lot of um, features in Trove that today we're able to deploy or, or use through the uh, CLI, use through the API that we're still not able to use through Horizon. So basically, um, we, we, have some, uh, we have a couple of blueprints that we're looking to tr tackle to improve Horizon to be able to um, uh, turn on these features through Horizon. Uh, some of these features are the ability to deploy Trove clusters through Horizon, uh, user and database management uh, through Horizon, uh, including the ability to create a root user so that you can initially create a root user through Horizon and then use that root user to do um, all of your 
user and database management offline with the tools that the specific data store um, uses. Um, another big one is uh, using configuration groups through Horizon uh, so that you're able to use a programmatic uh, GUI through, through the Horizon pages uh, through the database panel in Horizon you're able to set the config values that you want for your MySQL instance or for your Mongo instance. Um, uh, so we're looking to enable uh, that all of these features in Horizon so that sort of complete the, the UI experience in, in the database panel in Horizon. Um, so we've gotten a lot of feedback through uh, the Kilo cycle and even sort of during the beginning of the Liberty cycle about um, best practices deploying Trove in production. And, and um, a lot of uh, emails in, uh, in the mailing list talking about folks who want to deploy Trove, uh, asking questions such as, hey, how do I set up a messaging layer? How do I set up RabbitMQ for Trove? Or how do I set up databases for Trove? Or um, how do I actually set Trove up in, in a secure way so that people aren't able to, uh, users of Trove aren't able to break out of their instances and sort of uh, learn secrets that they're not supposed to know. Um, so based on the feedback that we've gotten from the mailing list and Summit, Summit we've decided that sort of uh, to author a new operations manual to tackle some of these uh, deployment issues and as to how we could deploy Trove in a secure manner, uh, how to deploy Trove in uh, sort of uh, multiple different configurations. Trove today is deployed uh, at various locations. It's deployed in, in HP in production. It's deployed in Rackspace in production. eBay deploys Trove um, as part of its sort of private cloud service. Um, and each one of us does it slightly differently. So basic, the basic idea here is for, for us to sort of pool our knowledge about how we're deploying Trove and come up with a consistent guide and a consist, consistent manual that we can then publish in the open so that uh, operators who are looking to take Trove and deploy it on their cloud have some guidance in, about the best practices as to how folks are doing this. So um, hopefully that will sort of allay some of the, um, the concerns people have with uh, the security issues with um, deploying Trove and sort of uh, will we'll make it easier for folks to understand how to deploy Trove in a more production-like environment. And apart from that, we've got a sort of a plethora of other uh, improvements, smaller, um, more sort of um, tiny blueprints that tackle uh, different areas of Trove strategically. So some of these are uh, exposing the data store logs to users through the Trove API, uh, support for management APIs in Python Trove clients today. The management APIs exist on the server, but you're not, you're not exactly able to call them unless you use something like curl. So making that uh, story much easier for folks so that if, uh, once it's exposed through the Trove client, you'd be able to just use the Trove client to make those calls. Uh, extending guest heartbeats to monitor data stores today. We support heartbeats that basically tell you whether a data store is up and running or, or whether it's down. Uh, basically uh, extending that mechanism to give you some more information about the data store, not just whether it's up or down, uh, is something we're looking into. We're also looking into adding metadata support for Trove instances. So say you want to tra tag your Trove instances with certain metadata um, that you want displayed in the UI for your own tracking purposes or whether it's part of a production cluster or whether it's uh, using a certain image or a certain data store type, uh, you'd be able to do that going forward. So these are some of the other improvements that we're considering uh, adding to Trove. Um, at least we're starting work on this. Um, not sure if all of these will uh, land in Liberty or not, or whether they will sort of continue on to the, uh, the, the next end release, which I believe is called MIDA. Um, so that, that sort of wraps it up for what we're planning to do during the Liberty release. Uh, of course, this is not a, a closed set of features that we're planning to tackle, and we're more than happy to, to have your idea here. So please, we're a growing community of con contributors. Um, 136 contributors from 30 plus companies, um, uh, more than 2,000 commits and 150,000 lines of code. So we're always open to new ideas and code, lots of room for improvement. So come find us at um, OpenStack Trove on Freenode. Um, if you have ideas, if you have uh, um, code that you'd like to contribute, or if you just want to come talk to us about deploying Trove or anything about Trove, 
uh, come find us. Um, next slide, please. Um, and uh, you can find me on IRC if you have any questions related to Trove. Uh, I'm Slicknick on IRC, at Slicknick on Twitter, and Slicknick at gmail.com. Feel free to email me and uh, hit me up with any questions that you may have, uh, and I'll be more than happy to assist you with that. Thank you so much for listening, um, uh, and uh, hope you have a rest, uh, a good rest of the evening or mor morning or whatever time it is in your time zone. Thanks.